Hello, my friend. My name is Anton from Kavalink.com, and today we will go through the, one of the recent additions we have made for our PYGNMI library, which is Python library to manage network devices with JNMI protocol. This addition, I would say, is very, very important, though some people could say, well, it is late or, well, it is undermined security or any other thing. So basically, the features that we have introduced in the recent release, 0.7.1, is called Skip Verify. For those of you who have previously worked with JNMI, you know that JNMI has two modes of operation, which is secure and insecure. Secure means that you need to establish the SSL session. And uh, to enable this SSL session, you need to have the certificate. Certificate should be signed. And one of the problems uh, that we have faced multiple times, as well as our clients, that in order to properly validate the session, the certificate authority should be somehow set. So technically using SSL certificate, self-signed SSL certificate with JNMI is not the best idea. And one of the features we have implemented long ago called override, where you have to specify manually which field or which value you would like to override in the original certificate. So you need to take a look on the certificate, figure out what the value is available there, and to implement uh, their new setup. And this was working fine. However, you need to really analyze the certificate and figure out which value you would like to rewrite. With this recent addition, we have modified the structure of our code so that the PYGNMI library itself is able to read the content of the certificate, figure out what are the available fields within the certificate, and in automatically do the rewrite for yourself. So that generally brings it to the same point as if you have used previously JNMI C, the Python, uh, the Go client created by our friends from Nokia, uh, have implemented long, long ago. So let's take a look how this is working and why we are so excited about that. Let's take a look on our host. First of all, let's take a look on their host where we have PYGNMI, just to show you uh, that we have the latest version of PY JNMI. You could see 071, which was published literally yesterday, or even today, I don't remember. The time is going so quick. And uh, this is what we will uh, use in our test code. So let's jump to our destination host against which we are going to make our test. So you see, this is a PY, um, the PY JNMI ES001. It is running JNMI, so it is enabled. It is running over the SSL and it has the SSL profile associated. Now within SSL profile, we could see that our common name is the PYGNMI EAS. So basically this is the name which is supposed uh, to be used to communicate to the device. Now, if we would go to our host and let's go to the prepared test script, so you would see that I'm trying to connect to the host using the different host name. So which means this host name is different to what you see on the host name itself. It's called here, uh, def pygnmi e 001 as well as it is, what I mean, let me remove this feature. So, and that's why we do not have in certificate this host name. So if I just try to run the test, Python test.py. So we're trying to connect to the host to retrieve the data. Now we have introduced one of the features needed for the SRS, which is trying to change the C, uh, cipher. Uh, for Nokia, it is working when you're working with SSL, which is needed. But here, clearly, the problem is not with the cipher. The problem here with certificate validation. Unfortunately, the way how the gRPC library created is not like really uh, very uh, detailed in terms of the error. Your future timeout could be anything. In this case, it means we can authenticate ourselves. Now let's go inside our output and we'll add this feature. Skip verify equal true. So now what is going to happen? We run our script. So we see that notification, hey, we have 
applying the override and uh, they should be testing only used only for the testing purposes uh, as soon as you have applied the override technically can connect to the host and as we are able to connect to the host we are retrieving the data so the same feature we have applied to the python uh pi genmi cli uh, all right, let me try to test you. Uh, right, my CLI. Then we need to specify our target, which would be our. Let me uh, quickly see some. Think. So this is our common. So is a CPY genomic CLI. We provide the uh, random PY genomic same host name. We provide uh, the get operation, the path we would like to retrieve the data, the username, and we are providing this uh, tag escape reply. Now we need to provide the password. Hope oh, I remember it. And as you see, we are retrieving the data from our host. Now, if we would, uh, so the data is expected to be there. But if we try to remove this flag and try to connect again without having the proper certificate, we are not connecting, we are not receiving any data. So using the script verify feature, though it has one, uh, the dependency, so you need to have uh, at least one of the fields within the receipt certificate that could be retrieved. So it could be the uh, CN itself, it could be the uh, extension field, so something that would allow the PYGNMI to do a trick and uh, make their uh, connectivity establish the authenticated uh, connectivity, encrypted connectivity toward the host. So Thank you very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this demo and you hope you will enjoy this feature as usual. If something doesn't work for you in your lab and scenario, feel free to reach out to us on the GitHub, raise the issue. If you like our library, make sure you show us your love in form of stars on the GitHub or reposts. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Stay healthy, stay safe, take care and goodbye.